Christian Livingstone here, and uh, it's springtime, 2020, it's April, and uh, you know, I like to do a lot of mower stuff, and uh, I heard a crew right up the, the street, and a real professional crew, they do a great job, and they came out with their uh, Walker lawnmowers, and I think they got a new unit, and walkers are arguably uh, probably the best uh, finished cut lawnmowers uh, out there, and uh, I really don't like the way they control, but uh, they came out with a new model, I think, and this Walker mower was so quiet, I was just kind of blown away because, you know, I did a, a video not too long ago about, you know, how to make your zero-turn riding mower uh, better than original and blah, blah, blah. I, I quieted down the deck a little bit and put the seat suspension in the front uh, fork shocking system, but... Uh, it just never occurred to me to uh, try to make the exhaust quieter, and uh, but now it has. It's dawned on me, and so uh, I got a cheap, uh, I got a cheap little add-on generic uh, tailpipe uh, style muffler. It'll go right into the uh, uh, exhaust port of a, an existing uh, a single cylinder. But I've got a, a, a twin, a V-twin Briggs. It has a, a muffler, it goes uh, two uh, pipes into the one muffler, uh, and it has a tailpipe. So I'm going to add a second muffler to an existing muffler to see if I can quiet it down even more. I, I put the uh, twin cylinder uh, Briggs motor on there not too long ago, and uh, you know, it comes with its own uh, uh, exhaust system, and it's fine. It's, it's quite, quite good, but uh, you know, that that tailpipe is hanging out just right. I think I'm going to add another muffler on top of the muffler and uh, this takes the uh, one inch uh, pipe fitting but uh, you know that necks it necks it down a little uh, from that. That's got about a, a one and a half uh, inch opening so I'm going to step up to uh, a little larger size and I'm going to just weld it on even though that one was uh, uh, seated just right. This will uh, not constrict, maybe not create so much back pressure uh, by adding this. For a lot of guys, this might be easy enough to just uh, put a collar or a, a U-clamp uh, to an existing tailpipe and uh, make it work with no welding. For other guys who've got a, a, a mid-welder, you know, you can spot, 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 tack and, uh, you know, just weld it right on. But, I, I did a little union action here so it can screw on, I can remove it. So we'll do a uh, before and after comparison with a, a measurable way to know uh, how much uh, benefit we get uh, in quietness with a, a meter uh, type uh, mechanism. And, uh, but these are uh, uh, cheap. Th this was eight or nine bucks. You can get these. This is a generic one. Briggs makes one uh, virtually identical. You pay a few more bucks, 12 bucks or something. But these are uh, surprisingly inexpensive. The coupler, I didn't uh, go with the existing threaded uh, one inch uh, pipe thread. Uh, I stepped up to a larger size so I, I wouldn't get any bottleneck or added uh, back pressure theoretically. So I've got a union and uh, those fittings cost another three bucks, another for the uh, female and the male, uh, three and three and uh, uh, eight or nine bucks. So this this is going to cost under twenty dollars, and uh, you know it may not uh, be very perceptible. We'll see. I don't know. I haven't uh, put the meter on there, but I, you know I've already kind of just loosely uh, slid it on there even before I welded in anything. And I thought it, you know, I was in, in the garage, and I thought it, yeah, it is. It's a little quieter, but. We won't know until we get outside where there's no echoes. It's open space, and uh, so it's it's a fun project for me. It's uh, just about ready to uh, demo as uh, best flows I can get. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm using. I'm using uh, the male and female, and I'll cut this and lighten this and fit this up to the. Uh, I'll show you the. Uh, actual place where it's going. It's going right there. So it'll hang off there real nice. I haven't uh, put out a whole lot of videos uh, recently, but I, I'm starting to get inspired again to do, do a few little ones. I've got another one in mind. It's just kind of 
kind of coming to mind about my uh, Dixon. I've done a lot on the Dixon mowers and uh, the friction drive ones especially because they're, uh, they're, they're tricky and, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty much uh, outdated now and uh, a lot of people are still wondering, you know, how do I, how do I keep this thing going without splashing out for a brand new $3,000 uh, hydro unit uh, zero turn. So, you know, I'm still digging mine and uh, I think I solved a little uh, mystery or, or issue that uh, that one commonly has. So, you know, I, I might put out one more Dixon friction drive video uh, here soon on the finer adjustments, tips and tricks. Uh, and hopefully that'll be it because I've done enough on Dixon. I'm, I'm tired of being the one guy out there who's, you know, really kind of, you know, geeking out on all this stuff. But, uh, you know, I wish some of the actual you know, uh, Dixon engineers or uh, dealer tech uh, gurus would come out of the woodwork and say, "Yeah, you know, we've done this for years. I'm just, I'm just a regular uh, residential kind of a guy." And uh, so, you know, but I'm having fun with it. And in lieu of anybody else coming forward, I'll just keep doing what I, I'm doing. Other than that, uh, I've got a, a Glock 27 that. Uh, uh, I put a different slide on, and uh, so I kept the old slide. And uh, but I, I put the uh, uh, old slide back on my Glock 27, and uh, so I've got uh, an extra slide. And I bought a uh, P80 lower receiver that's 80% complete, so it's not technically a firearm in the statist uh, uh, you know classification. So you can just buy them uh, you know online, and uh, they arrive to your door and. Uh, you do the uh, other 20% drilling, filing, blah, 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 and you can make your own handgun. So uh, I've got the slide. I'm going to put it on this uh, lower receiver and, uh, with the added part. So I'm going to come up with another, uh, you know, pseudo Glock 27, uh, and uh, that'll be a fun project. So uh, this project, a little more on the Dixon, probably coming down the pike, and then uh, 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 do it yourself Glock 27. So. Uh, that's what I got coming down the pike, so stick around. And here's the first step. I just split it with a, a grinder and a, a cutting disc. And uh, you know, I, I suppose if I had a bandsaw or a, a chop saw, it might have been a, a little more elegant way to cut it. But uh, that's fine. I'm going to split this and break them apart. And that way, they'll uh, the in inner diameter there is... Uh, wider than the threads are, so I, I believe that'll sleeve right onto that uh, tailpipe. But, and here we go with the uh, galvanized ground out, any of the little flanges and nomenclature, that's all gone. Make this a little lighter, it was needlessly uh, uh, heavy weight, you know, just, uh, that's pretty burly. The belt sander there and make it uh, look better and more cylindrical and smooth a finish both the, here on the face and on the side walls. Okay and so here is the coupler all cleaned up on the bench uh, sand or the uh, belt sander over there and you know you can see it looks uh, pretty tidy and little bevels and stuff but this is how it's going to go. I'm going to weld to here and uh, this to the uh, existing muffler and then I can just unscrew this if needs be and uh, you can see it's just a, a much bigger throat there this this would have been how it would go and you, know, you can see that sits right in there so it'll just be a, a lot better flow okay and there's the uh, coupler uh, uh, just uh, loose fit up against the uh, muffler, the existing muffler. I think I'm going to cut off uh, about a half inch of that so this this uh, goes flush up against the muffler and I'll weld to that because this uh, has a needless one inch in between there. I want to get this a little closer in, like about there, not touching. Okay, I got a couple of tacks already. I'll uh, see if uh, I can show you uh, doing one now that I got the camera set up. But uh, yeah, it's going well. There might be some residual traces of that galvanized in there. But uh, so far, so good. And uh, you know, I've done a lot more uh, stick and MIG welding in my life uh, years ago, but uh, now uh, I find uh, a TIG welder's all I'm using uh, lately. This uh, 
Everlast has dual voltage and I'm running off uh, 120 volt power and I get up to uh, 125 amps, which is plenty for uh, the kind of stuff that I do nowadays. So, so uh, you know, TIG welding's great. There's no smoke, no spatter. I'm using a hand amp troll device. A lot of guys use pedals, but uh, hand uh, amp troll devices are becoming a, a little more popular lately, I think. Let's see if I can and there that's a quick tack you know I'm gonna go around uh, half a dozen or more uh, uh, places before I get the uh, actual uh, little petite tape uh, bead in there so I, I don't punch through anything that Okay, and here comes the Bessie clamp to the rescue again, and uh, I've got it uh, uh, seated down what I think is pretty square. You know, you look in two directions, and you cinch down the uh, clamp over and over a few times until you get it uh, to where you think it, uh, you know, won't be wobbling to one side or the other, back and forth. And while I've got it tacked up, uh, I just uh, put the uh, second uh, muffler on there to see if it looks uh, pretty square and, and not too... Uh, you know, off round, and it does, it looks fine to me. Okay, there it is, all welded up. It's still hot, so I'm not going to touch it, of course, but uh, let me just use this to point out some things. Uh, I think, uh, you know, this was a, a cast metal fitting because I got some weird undercut just to the one side on the fitting, so I, I think that was a cast metal. This is a single pass. You know, it's not the prettiest thing, uh, you know, especially when you do uh, cast. So I'm not going to try to pretty it up. You get uh, too much uh, heat input on cast, and it can start tink, 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 and, uh, you know, you can get some uh, cracks or something. I, I don't know if it would uh, hurt it to, uh, uh, you know, put a quick autogenous weave pass with no filler, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it just like that, and, uh, you know, uh, paint covers a, a multitude of welding sin, so I'll just... Uh, uh, spray some paint on there and as you can see the uh, mufflers all painted up and it was welded on and the uh, opening uh, Shows that it was pretty much dead on. Uh, I mean it may not be perfectly uh, uh, Square and, and everything but uh, it, it's gonna be uh, uh, you, you won't be able to notice it looks pretty good. So uh, Logan my neighbor from around the corner at the old neighborhood He uh, wanted to get in on this and Maybe make a few bucks, so I said, sure, come on. And, you know, like Curtis, my other uh, uh, buddy uh, who used to give me a hand at times, you know, he moved to uh, a town down the road. And uh, so uh, Logan wants to get in on this and uh, maybe make a few bucks. We're probably going to transplant some uh, a plant uh, as well. But he's going to install this, and uh, then we'll put on that uh, screw on uh, tailpipe muffler the added secondary muffler we're adding a muffler to this existing muffler and it's a uh, this is a, a v-twin and so you got the two uh, you know header pipes going into the muffler so uh, but the other screw on muffler is just for a single but uh, that'll go right on to the uh, tailpipe so uh, let's get to it Logan I'll keep this uh, uh, the second muffler uh, in hand and I'll get down here uh, uh, right uh, by the uh, unit and start it up and we'll have you run the decibel meter not the decimal meter the decibel meter I just don't want to say decibel but uh, anyway it's it's on my phone somewhere you see see where the decimal meter uh, is decibel meter decimal Decibel. Decibel. Yeah, you got me saying it. I know. That line. How far would you say that is? Uh, 12 feet? Yeah. 15 feet? Okay, we'll use that as the baseline. So we'll uh, start the uh, uh, engine and, and run it, and uh, you tell us what you get in decibels uh, after it's running, and then. I'll uh, screw this on and we'll see what the uh, uh, difference is. Okay, let's start it up. You can see it's pointing in a direction that uh, it won't uh, echo off anything too much. Uh, Logan already mentions that there's a little wind going on and so that may affect it, but uh, we'll see uh, 
even with the wind, what uh, the difference is. 60.2 decibels conversation. 60.2, okay. How about with no conversation? Busy traffic because the wind is 74. You're getting 74 when we're not talking? Because the wind. How about, what's that, 60? And then the wind dies down and goes down to 58 for quiet office. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. And then 45, quiet library. It goes as low as 45 when it's real still. Huh. This may not be the best time to uh, do this, but we're going to do it anyway and just keep in mind those figures because, uh, you know, when we put the uh, muffler on, then we'll 76. see. How, mu how much? 76, then 54. Okay, so those are pretty much the highs and low average. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind. So, 50. All right, we'll keep... Uh, Keep those in mind and uh, start this baby up. Come on. How much? 75 and 71 without the wind. Down from what? 80 something busy street to uh, busy traffic. To, to mid to low 70s from 80? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a, that's a slight difference. It's not much. I'll take what I can get. But uh, anyway, I think we've uh, completed the project. So for twenty but under $20, that's what we did. We lowered it maybe five points if we're lucky. Uh, five decibels. I'll take it. Try to get the wind die down. Okay. That's pretty good. 71? Yeah, from 80 to 71. That's like nine decibels. Okay. Okay, but yeah, it might be uh, more accurate if we did it when it was perfectly still, yeah. but still I'm guessing the difference is going to be about the same. You know, the range is going to be uh, reduced that percentage. <laughs> okay, I've done a little mowing and it does seem quieter. Uh, you know, maybe uh, about by what the numbers in the decibel meter uh, suggested, between 5 and 10 percent. That's really kind of uh, subjective to say, yeah, that's what my ears heard also. But, you know, it seems to be about it. You know, 5 to 10 percent. Not a lot, but uh, noticeable. And so uh, that's what I did. I, I thought it was quieter, except when you get around these walls and stuff, you'll still get the echo. and. You know, that's, that's no fun, but uh, that can't be helped. Any mower will do the same thing. But uh, for under $20, 5 to 10%, let's say 7%, I'll take it. Okay?